Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So something happened on this channel for the past couple days, and you may have noticed it, you may not have, but I got hacked. And long story short, YouTube stepped in and they got everything back, and I'm super thankful for that. And I'm also really thankful for all the outpouring of support that I got on my email and everywhere else. It really means a lot to me that you stepped in and tried to help me out with this. Now, I could talk all day about how thankful I am about this channel and everyone else involved in it, but we got work to do. And today, our work involves getting PSP and PS1 games working on the PlayStation Vita. Now, there are already a ton of guides on how to get these games working on a PS Vita, but today I'm hoping to give you a definitive source for everything. That's going to include all the tweaks to make sure your screen settings are correct, and then also some tips on organization. In the end, this is actually a pretty simple process. We're going to use an app called Adrenaline to replicate the PSP environment. And within there, we're going to play PSP games as well as PS1 games. And finally, I'm going to show you a trick to get all of your apps showing on the front page of your PS Vita so you don't have to enter into that PSP environment if you don't want to. I really enjoy having my games this way because it gives me an integrated experience. Now, a couple caveats here. First things first, you need to do a permanent mod on your Vita. And I also recommend that you have the SD card mod done as well, so that way you can put as many games as you want onto your device. So be sure to check out those videos if you haven't already. Okay, let's not belabor the point. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so on the front page of my website, you'll find my PS Vita guide. And here you've got everything you need for the PS Vita. And this thing is a work in progress. I keep adding more and more things to it as I figure them out. But today we're going to do two things. First, we're going to set up something called Auto Plugin 2. And then we're also going to install something called Adrenaline. Let's start with Auto Plugin 2. Just click on the link here to go to the Auto Plugin section and then select the download link. And then same thing with Adrenaline. Now just go to each of these respective GitHub pages and then select Auto Plugin 2 and do the same thing with Adrenaline. All you really need to do is grab these VPKs. VPKs are basically install files for Vita games. So once you have them saved off to a folder, let's get them onto the Vita. There's many ways you can do this. We're going to do it the easiest way, which is just through USB. So we're going to open up Vita Shell, which we installed in the first permanent mod guide. And then within here, all you have to do is press the select button to enter USB mode. So now, assuming that you have your Vita plugged into your PC, you're going to get a window pop up, and this is going to be your SD card file system. Now, in an earlier video, we already made a folder called VPKs. If you don't have one, just go ahead and make one here. If you have anything remaining in the folder from a previous project, you can either delete it, leave it there, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's move over Adrenaline and Auto Plugin 2. Just like that, we're done. We can go back to our PS Vita and then hit the X button to cancel out of the USB connection. Okay, so if you look at the file directory here, you can see the UXO folder is 16 gigabytes, and that's because I have a 16 gigabyte card in this Vita. And on this card is where we're gonna store our game files, our apps, everything else. So pretty easy, let's just navigate to the UXO folder and then scroll all the way down until you find the VPKs folder. And within there, you can see Adrenaline and Auto Plugin 2. All you have to do now is install them. Just select one of the apps, then hit the circle button. It's going to say, do you really want to do this? And you say, yeah, man, I want to do it. And let the install process finish. Do the same thing for the next app. Same thing here. It's going to prompt you to confirm. Just go ahead and hit the yeah, man, I want to do it button. OK, so once they're installed, pretty easy. Just go ahead and press the home button and then exit out of Vita Shell. And there you can see Adrenaline as well as Auto Plugin 2. Let's start up Adrenaline first. When you start up Adrenaline, it's going to say you need to download the PSP 6.61 firmware. So just go ahead and hit the X button to start that download process. And this is going to download the actual official firmware from the PSP. Once that's done, Adrenaline's going to close out. So all you have to do at this point is just go back into it. Now that you've downloaded the firmware, the next time you open it up, it's going to ask you to install the firmware. Same thing here, just press X. It'll take a minute to run through the process, then it'll ask you to press X again to boot into the PSP environment. From here, it's like setting up a brand new PSP. It's going to ask you to select your language, set up your date and time, things like that. Just go ahead and go through all those prompts. It'll also ask you to set up a nickname. It really doesn't matter what you select here. Okay, so now we're in the PSP menu. There's not a lot we can do because we don't have any games or anything on here. But one thing you could do is you can go into the themes and maybe change the coloring, things like that. It's all up to you. I'm just going to leave it at the default for now. 
Okay, to exit Adrenaline, you're going to double click on the home button and then swipe down to exit. Now there's one common error that happens with Adrenaline. When you try to open up Adrenaline, it's going to exit the very first time. And then if you go in a second time, then it'll open up. This is called a double touch. And luckily, there's a plugin that'll fix this. So now let's use Auto Plugin 2 to actually fix it. Now Auto Plugin 2 can do all sorts of helpful things for your PS Vita, and I'll probably do a dedicated video to this alone, but for now let's fix Adrenaline. So go into Vita Plugins, Install Plugins, and then the second one there says Adrenaline, Fix Double Touch. Just go ahead and hit the circle button, and then it'll be installed. And then hit Start to Exit, it's going to reboot the system when you do that. Okay, so now we have a rebooted system, let's try to start up Adrenaline. And look at that, it started right up. Now this would be the part where a lot of YouTubers would tell you to go and install a certain app that will allow you to basically download games directly onto your device. PS Vita games, PSP games, PS1 games, the works. But there's two things I want to address about that. Number one, we're a wholesome channel here on Retro Game Core and I'm never going to share illegal content like that. And number two, the methods that are out there, they're not perfect. For example, they're only going to allow you to download games that are offered on the Sony store. But the entire catalog for PSP and PS1 are not in the Sony store. So if you want to download a game, for example, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, OutRun 2006, or even Luminous, none of those are on the PlayStation Store. So you're going to have to load those manually. And so for those two reasons, the rest of the video I'm going to show you how to manually load your own games. So let's jump into that process. Okay, first things first, turn off your PS Vita, and then take out your SD card. Put it into a USB SD card adapter, and then plug it into your PC. Now on your SD card, there are two specific paths where your games need to go. On the PS1, it's going to be on this top path, and I'll show you how to use that here in a minute. One thing to note is your games need to be in PBP format. You can't use bin or Q files or anything else like that. And for PSP, they're going to be in the path that I've noted below. And I'll show you these here in the video in a second, but I kind of go pretty fast through it, so I wanted to make sure you had these written and available to you. Okay, let's start with PS1. So here's my PS1 library here on the left. Now the first thing we need are the title IDs of each of these games. And that sounds intimidating, but in my guide I'll have a link here to this website which will pull up all these title IDs for you. So let's pick a game here, we're going to start with Crash Team Racing. So on this website you're going to search by title, and here's the game here, you can see it has this weird code in front of it. That's the title ID. So all we need to do is copy that code, and then in that folder I showed you earlier, we're going to make a new folder and we're going to name it the name of that code. So just paste that code in there and then open it up, and then move the game over. But again, these are PBP files. Now, once the game's moved over, we're going to change it to eboot.pbp, all caps. And that's it, we're done. We have the correct file path here, the title ID, and then the eboot pbp. That's all you have to do to add PS1 games. Okay, so let's try this with another one. Let's try this one here, Final Fantasy X. I don't know what that one is, let's try that one out. So again, we're going to do a search. Final Fantasy X. Now this one has two different title IDs. Sometimes this will happen. Often it's going to be a European versus American release. I'm just going to grab the one with the U in it because U for United States. Oh, it's Final Fantasy IX. Why didn't you guys tell me? Anyway, so just select this title ID, copy it, and we're going to do the same thing again. We'll go back into this folder, make a new folder, Paste in that new title ID, open it up, move over that PBP file, and I bet you can guess what we're going to do next. We're going to change the name to eboot.pbp, all caps. So that's it. We're actually done at that point. We have two PS1 games installed. All right, now let's do the easy ones here. PSP. On the left, you can see I have my PSP library. We're going to open up that PSP emu folder again. Now we're going to make a folder in here called ISO, all caps. And then all you have to do here is actually just move over the ISO files, no renaming or anything. So let's pick a couple games here, OutRun 2006, and then one that nobody's heard of before. Let's try this one, God of War, Chains of Olympus. So just move them over to this new folder, and you're actually done. That's all you have to do for PSP, super easy. Let's eject our SD card, put it back into our Vita. Okay, opening up Adrenaline again here, and look at that, that single touch, man, that makes me so happy. I love that plugin. 
So you're gonna find all your games in the memory stick section. You can see here I have 10 gigs of free space because I have a 16 gigabyte card. Open it up and there it is, OutRun 2006, God of War Chains of Olympus, Final Fantasy X, I mean Final Fantasy IX, and Crash Team Racing. So let's test some of these out. We'll start with PS1 again. And just like that, you get the full boot logo and everything. And I didn't have to load up any BIOS, it all works perfectly. Now when you first boot up a PS1 game, it's gonna be playing at integer scaling, which means it's not gonna take up the full screen. So let me show you how to scale things. You hold onto the home button for a second, and then up top you select adrenaline settings. Now within here you have all sorts of things you can change. We're gonna tab over to the settings tab. And there you can see graphics filtering, it's set to original. Within here you can change it to different filters, which work basically like shaders. And I personally like the one that says Advanced AA, Advanced Anti-Aliasing. It's gonna smooth out a lot of those jagged pixels. And then next it's gonna say Smooth Graphics. I usually turn that off. I think that's a form of bilinear filtering. And then you can also do screen scaling. You can see it's at a 1x integer scaling. Now this is all gonna be up to you. It's totally personal preference, but I like to do an X of 1.225 and a Y of 1.265. It's a little bit wider than a 4x3, but I think it's a good balance between the true aspect ratio and filling up as much screen as possible before it starts to make my head hurt. And that's what it looks like here. I think it looks pretty good. Now one thing you want to do in the adrenaline settings to make sure you have the best picture possible, in the first tab you want to go to open official settings. And within here you want to select other settings. And there you can see it has a bilinear filtering option again. Go ahead and turn that one off as well. Here we are with a filter of advanced anti-aliasing with no bilinear filtering on and also running at that custom scale that I mentioned earlier. And I think that looks pretty great. A couple other tricks here. On the second tab of the adrenaline menu, you can do save states. And these run across the entire platform, so that means the save state that you save here is not specific to just Final Fantasy IX. You could put a different game down below it, which is kind of a good and a bad thing, as I'll show you later in the video. Okay, that's enough for PS1 for now. Let's start up PSP. Now, same thing with this one. You can go into the adrenaline settings and adjust things. First thing you might notice is the screen scaling is set to 2.0. And that's because the PS Vita has exactly twice as many pixels as the original PSP, which means it's a perfect 2x integer scaling. So you don't actually have to make any changes to that, that's perfectly awesome. But there are other settings I would recommend you change. You don't really need to do any filter, but I kind of like the LCD 3x one, as well as the sharp bilinear one. But it's going to be up to you. There's also another setting to change the filter on the color. So if you want a more yellow screen or a more blue screen, you can change that right here which is really great if you're like playing this at night in the dark. But yeah, as you can see here, PSP plays wonderfully on this device. It's kind of amazing how good this looks. Now that being said, this is not going to upscale the image in any way. Sure, it gives you that double integer scaling, but it's not going to improve the resolution at all. As you can see here, everything looks like that original kind of hazy PSP resolution. So it's not going to be upscaled like you can on like an Android phone. It's just something to bear in mind. It still looks great, it's just not high resolution. All right, I promised earlier that I was gonna show you how to organize things as well. Let's do that now. We're gonna download a different VPK. This one's called Adrenaline Bubble Manager. And the process is the same thing. You're gonna to go to the GitHub page, which you can find on my written guide, download the VPK, and then plug in your PS Vita using Vita Shell, and then move it over into that VPKs folder. In general, this is just the process you're going to do when you're installing VPKs manually. I prefer to do it this way, it's just a very easy process. And once you're back on your device, go ahead and install it just like you did the other VPKs. And then close out a Vita shell, and there you can see the Adrenaline Bubbles Manager. Just go ahead and open up the Bubbles Manager one time. And then it's going to tell you it's been installed, you hit OK, and it's going to say it's going to reboot the device. It's also gonna warn you that after your reboot, you need to open up Adrenaline. So let's do that now. Okay, so here's the rebooted device. We're gonna go into Adrenaline. As soon as it opens up, you can just go ahead and close it out again. Now let's actually get into Bubbles Manager. It's been freshly installed. And there you go. The Bubbles Manager can read through Adrenaline and see what games you have installed. Now there's several things you can do to each game. Number one, I like to adjust the bubble. What I do is I press the L button to make the image stretch across the entire bubble. 
You can also upload your own images, things like that. We're not going to get into detail with all that. We're just going to make big bubbles here. Once you're ready, you can hit the circle button for whatever selected games you have, or you can just hit the triangle button to do all of them at once. We're going to do all at once, so I'm going to hit the triangle button and then confirm. And as it goes through the process, it's going to ask you to confirm the title of every game. This is where you can change things out. So instead of saying Crash Team Racing, you could have it say CTR. It's really up to you. Or with OutRun here, you can see it's all in caps. You could change that so it's more consistent. We're just keeping it plain here, and we're just going to install it just as it is. Once you've confirmed everything, it's going to run through the installation process, and it's going to make all these bubbles for you. And once that's done, you can go ahead and close out the Bubbles Manager, and there you are. We now have new bubbles for our games. We've got our two PSP games as well as our two PS1 games. Okay, so let's start up Final Fantasy IX here and see how it looks. And just like that, it opens right into the game. Now, when you use the bubble to open up a game like this, everything's going to be a little bit different when it comes to the menus. All you have to do is just tap the home button once and it'll take you right into the adrenaline menu. It's actually much faster this way. And here you can see your save states carry over as well, so you can load up your save states. And there we are, we're back into the game. Now to exit a game, it's actually easy too. You just tap on the home button and then you go down to the exit PSP MU application. And then just confirm that and it takes you right out of the bubble. And there you are, you're back on your Vita home screen. So it's a very simple process. Let's start up a PSP game, see how this works. Now unfortunately, using the bubble method is not going to give you that beautiful PSP splash screen, but it will boot right into the game. And just to reiterate here, playing PSP games on a PS Vita is awesome. So if you really love playing PSP games, you want to play them at full speed, this is probably one of the best options out there. Now on top of that, we can organize the bubbles to make everything a little bit easier. And this works a lot like a smartphone. You hold onto the app for a second, then you create a folder, then you move them over, you rename the folder. I think you probably know how to do this already. And there you go. Now we have PS1 and PSP folders which have the bubbles inside. So we can go into one to get our PS1 games, get into our PSP games. You know how this works. Now I told you earlier that save states are kind of hit and miss. One of the things that kind of sucks about them is they take a while to load. But what I like about them is they're cross-platform. So you can actually be in any game, and then you can load up a save state from any other game. It's not only going to open up that other game, it's going to open it up at that save state. So that's super handy if you want to jump in between your games right there from the menu. Alright, one last cool trick with PSP. If you remember, a lot of the old PSP games used the L and R buttons to control the camera. And at the time it was the only thing they could use because they only had one analog stick. But we can change that in the settings. So if you go into the game settings, in there you can see a right stick option. And then you can change the right stick to L and R. And now all of a sudden your right stick is going to function like the L and R buttons, which means you can use them as a camera on the games that use them like that. So all of a sudden we have twin stick ratchet and clank. And I think that's super awesome. Okay, so wrapping things up, here is a fully loaded PS Vita with all my PSP and PS1 games. You can see I have these different bubbles here, and I can jump right into these games. And it's all fast and zippy and fun to play. Hands down, this is one of my favorite PSP experiences across the board. I love how it's all integrated into your PS Vita, and I don't really mind that I don't have a high resolution screen on this, because everything looks so bright and crisp, and it all runs at full speed. Alright everyone, we covered a lot of ground on this, I hope it was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful. And we will see you next time. Happy gaming!